Okay, so let's walk through the demo. Uh, I guess the first thing is um, make sure everybody knows where to go get the downloads. Um, so I think the most important download is um, is uh, the MQ download. Um, you want to browse to the MQ uh, dev site. Uh, just click on the download now button. Scroll down to uh, where the links are. Choose the download package that you want. Uh, we have several Solaris, AIX, Linux, Windows, generic Unix. Uh, download and install that copy. Um, uh, let's see, if you're going to use Glassfish, you'll want to browse over to the Glassfish project. Uh, download that project, uh, install it. Now, I'm just using the standard configurations. Uh, I haven't done anything uh, to modify them, uh, and I just installed them in their natural, the, the default locations uh, for Windows. That's what I'm using here. Uh, okay, so let's see. I guess the first thing we want to do is start up um, MQ. So, let's see. I'm in the uh, MQ bin directory. Um, want to use IMQ broker D um, start it up um, use the dash TTY option that way all of the output will come into this um, will go into this window um, we can see what's going on there um, let's see then um, so that successfully started up now let's um, let's go to UMS uh, you want to start up the uh, uh, sorry, not UMS. Let's go to um, Glassfish. Uh, you want to start up the uh, uh, Glassfish domain. Okay, now it's going to start up. Uh, I guess that's one of the cool things about Glassfish v3 is um, its startup time a lot better than it used to be. Alright, now uh, the first thing you need to do is deploy the UMS uh, WAR file. I have actually made a copy of this, taken it out of the uh, MQ distribution, uh, and I put it into my demo directory. So let's see, so dot AS um, deploy uh, C colon. Alright, so that's going to go get me a copy of my UMS WAR file. Uh, and deploy it. <clears throat> okay, so with that all done, I think we're ready to go. Let's check it out. So let's see. I have these bookmarked because I'm trying to do a demo. So let's go see if the UMS um, servlet's up. So if you just go to localhost 8080 UMS, uh, you'll get the um, description of how to use it. Uh, we give you uh, all the um, documentation, how do you set it up, all of that's available actually in the uh, UMS servlet. Um, the API is available here. You can uh, review this at your leisure. This information is also published to the OpenMQ site, so it's pretty easy uh, to get the information ahead of time, or you can um, grab it uh, after you've deployed the servlet. Okay, um, let's start off by showing you a couple of um, things that help you just sort of verify that your configuration is um, up and running. Uh, so I've got a couple of bookmarks here that I use to run the demo. I think the first one is let's just see there's a service called ping. Let's just see uh, what that says and confirm that everything is up. So you can see it says the broker is alive um, and we're able to ping it successfully. The next service um, should help you um, find out, well, what, what are the name of the destinations uh, that are available here on this broker. And you can, as you can see, I'm messed around with this a little bit. I've got several destinations, all of which are uh, currently running. Some have messages in them. Uh, some don't. If you look at this very last one here, destination AQ, you'll see there's 10 messages sitting in there. Uh, then the um, last thing I think we w we can do here with these services is let's um, let's take a look at those destinations. Um, so let's see, we had AQ. 
Uh, it didn't like the destination that I had bookmarked, but let's see if we can change that to the one that I had there. A Q U E U E. Let's see if that works. And so you can see it has a that particular destination has 10 messages in it. Um, and um, it's ready. Well, one could pull messages out of it or one could put some messages back into it. All right, so there's um, several different examples here. You've got the Ajax example. That's um, the first one in this list. We've got some C-sharp examples. Uh, and we also have some Python examples. Uh, the easiest ones to demonstrate are the uh, Ajax examples. So let me start those up. Um, the f we have there's two samples. One's to send messages, uh, and one's to receive messages. So, gee, let's just send uh, ten messages. Uh, comes up, starts sending, sets automatically sets the destination to simple Q, uh, and then inserts a uh, sample message for you. So. Gee, let's just send some messages. All right, so a bunch of messages got sent, and um, looks like we're well. Let's see. Um, maybe we want to go take a look, browse inside, and see what we have. Now, if you've been following the um, Java.net project, uh, you may have seen some of our announcements. Uh, for example, we post some instructions, how do you set up uh, Hermes. Uh, Hermes JMS is a, a nice community um, JMS oriented browser uh, and uh, administration uh, tool. Uh, I've set that up actually. Um, and I'm going to bring it into the window. And um, if you follow the directions there, it'll show you how to um, how to how to set that up. Let's see. So since I've done this, been a good uh, demo guy. Uh, I pre-set up the queue, but I can I'll show you later how do you how do you look at that ahead of time. Um, simple queue. Aha! I have to pick the right queue. So if I double click on the queue, I can see that I've got a total of 10, well, it looks like I had some extra messages in there, some messages that were sent yesterday and some messages that are sent today. They're all sitting here waiting to um, uh, be delivered. All right, so let's see if I go back to the, um, to my original browser window, uh, let's start up the receive message. Uh, Ajax. Uh, and notice it's set, it automatically comes up to re receive messages off Simple Queue. So let's start it up. And sure enough, it goes off, grabs all the messages, and just brings them out. So you can see I got not only did I get the messages that I left in this queue yesterday, but I also um, uh, received the, ten, the 10 messages that I just sent um, just this morning. All right, and then if I refresh back over here at Hermes um, JMS, you see that there are no no more in, <laughs> there are no messages left on the queue. Uh, so that's pretty nice. Uh, yes, yeah, sending uh, you can send and receive messages to and from Ajax. Um, so that's an example of a, a, a very you know a, a pretty typical um, a pretty typical HTML style application. So let's um. Let's take a look at some other kinds of applications. So uh, another example that we have, if I can get back to my browser window, there we go. Um, we have uh, a couple of examples, um, sending and receiving messages um, in one in C sharp. So let's take a look at that. Now when you open it up, it, um, it shows up all kind of blobbed together. So why don't we um, refact reformat that so we can see it uh, in its original form. Apologize for the slow. Um, anyway, so here's the math. Here's the um, source code, and what you can see is uh, there's a lot of sort of definitions. Um, it's arranged pretty easily. 
clearly clear to re clear to read it um, and figure out what it's doing so uh, as you can see basically this all of the um, code here is creating the XML document that you're going to um, write uh, creating the commands um, uh, and then actually posting them okay so easy to see easy to read uh, hope you uh, hope that gives you get you off uh, on a good uh, to a good start uh, we actually deliver a compiled version of that it's, it's um uh, it's available in the samples what you want to do is you want to right click that that dot exe files and save those off to disk okay now let's try something a little more uh, heterogeneous um, I've got two demo directories that I've set up um, and in them I have taken a couple of those scripts and I've um, or a couple of those samples and I've um, installed them let's see in this directory called demo2 uh, I've installed the receive soap message.exe uh, remember that's a compiled C sharp example uh, it only runs on Windows because it uses .NET uh, and then in my other directory uh, demo1 I've got a send soap message uh, .py which is a Python script uh, and then I've got a couple of um, example files that I can use to uh, to show how this works All right so I'm gonna send a message using soap uh, using soap uh, constructed with Python and I'm going to receive it um, using a um, C sharp example now normally uh, I guess you would um, you you probably want to send a message into a queue have your backend systems do some processing and then the receiver would take the modified message but for the purposes of this sam this example um, we don't do any modification All right so let's start at the receiver just to make things go smoothly uh, so let's see in this case it's all self-contained so I say uh, receive so message exe uh, s uh, and I think that's all I have to type okay so it starts up tells you that it's looking at localhost um, comes up with a default destination simple soap queue and this is a queued uh, uh, it's using a queued message type uh, now back over here in the demo one directory um, again I'm gonna um, send a message so I say in this case since I'm using Python I gotta uh, run the command using Python P uh, um, same um, service name and uh, then I'm going to use a file let's send the logo the Sun logo so so what will happen if it works right is the um, it will take this binary message it actually encodes it as a text file using a simple um, base64 encoding uh, and then it puts it on the queue the receiver will eventually pull pick up the message and the receiver has will actually just drop it on the file system and tell the file system to you know to do something with it uh, so there um, pop the message and as you can see it opened up the uh, uh, the image viewer and there's my file so over in the receive directory you can see that it received it logs a message it received the message logo sun and it has that um, uh, unique key that's generated for the message and that's the same message that's um, popped up here on the screen okay so that concludes the uh, demo part um, now we'll um, switch back over to the presentation.